Hello guys, today I'm going to show you how to assemble a pan and tilt center mount. If you've purchased any one of my smart car kits or the pan and tilt uh, sensor mounting uh, kit, you're going to see these black plastic pieces that make up the framework of the kit. And today we're going to be using these hobby servos. These are the most common servos you're going to find. And they're the, uh, the 9Gs with model number SG90. If you're building one of the smart car kits, you're going to want to go ahead and grab your SR04 ultrasonic sensor as well. Um, it's part of the process of making the pan and tilt, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But if you are building the pan and tilt, just go ahead and skip the part where we affix the sensor. You're not limited to using just these 9G micro servos. There's a few other options, like this MG90S. It's got a metal gearbox inside, and it's going to be a little bit more stout, and the, the gears won't strip quite as easily. Now, there's a couple other differences um, in the, the, uh, the gear mountings that you're going to find. And the MG90S, you're going to see black plastic that's a little bit thicker. The whole pattern is going to be slightly different, uh, but they can be used interchangeably. For today's purposes, instead of using the, the, the black kit that I showed you before, I'm going to go ahead and assemble this green kit here because it just simply shows up much better on camera and it's a little bit easier to follow along what I'm doing. The first piece we're going to be interested in is going to be this main base plate right here. So now that you have your base plate out, uh, go ahead and dump out your gear mounting uh, brackets. And the part that we're going to be interested in is going to be this four spoke piece right here and uh, as you can see it doesn't quite fit into the bracket so what we're going to have to do is make some modifications now normally I'll use a Dremel or you can use an X-Acto knife the most important thing you're going to want to watch out for when you're making your adjustments is not to cut into these holes here we're going to want those intact because that's what we're going to be using to screw the, the mounting bracket down onto the plate with Once the trimming has been completed on this uh, gear mounting bracket, it should look something like this. And it should be able to fit down into the, uh, the cross fairly easily. And be sure to, to line up the holes the best you can. The screws I like to use are these little tiny ones with the, uh, the flat heads. And as you can see on the back of the base plate, these holes are beveled. So once you put them in, uh, the finished product should be nice and flush. It's all right to, to glue down the gear mounting bracket before you start putting in the screws. And in some cases, that might be a better option. I find it's typically uh, adequate if you can get one or two screws into place that um, the, the mounting bracket won't slip around. But as you can see here, there's uh, just some, time, some places where the holes just don't line up. With our gear mounting secured in place, we're going to go ahead and grab a micro servo and uh, screw that down in. And a lot of people skip the screwing in part, but especially with the cars, but every time the car runs into something, that gear head's gonna pop off with your ultrasonic sensor. The screws I like to use with these 9Gs are these flat tipped ones. They grab on to the, uh, the gear head really well. We're gonna go ahead and insert the, the gear head onto the gear mounting bracket. And what's very important to do here is to make sure that your, your servo is set centered. So you're going to want to make sure that it can turn equal distance in both directions. Now that you have it centered, go ahead and take that flat head screw and put it down in there and tighten it down. Once you have that screw tightened down all the way, you'll notice that the servo doesn't come off of the base plate anymore. Let's assemble the middle part of the frame. And you're going to want these wedge shaped pieces and go ahead and put it on there. But one important thing to note is that the wire is, that comes out here is going to be on the sloping side of this frame. You, each of these micro servos are going to have this plastic tab and just be sure that it goes inside the plastic slot. Grab your other uh, sloping piece and snap it into place. You might have to press a little hard but make sure that there's no gap in between these two plastic pieces. Now, the screws I like are these long pointed ones. There they are and you, you just drop them into the holes and screw them down. Now 
At this point, the servo should turn with a, a little bit of tension. And uh, if you're building a smart car kit, this, is a, this will complete the assembly. The only thing left to do is to grab the ultrasonic sensor and to put it into place. When you put this ultrasonic sensor into place, you're going to want to make sure that the, the pins are facing up. With the wires mounted on the top, the device is free to pan back and forth without tangling the wires. When mounting the ultrasonic sensor, I like to use plastic zip ties. And when I do it, I stick it through the side of the frame here, and I'll wrap one around the transmitter and one around the receiver. And when I put my first one on, I don't make it too tight. That way, when I go to put the second one on, I have a little bit of room to adjust the, uh, the board on the frame so it's not seeing askew. When I finish mounting the board with the zip ties, I don't typically cut the ends off. I like to leave them on because it gives a cute little antenna look to the, uh, to the finished product. With the ultrasonic module firmly mounted to the frame, we're now complete with the panning assembly that can be mounted on top of most of the smart car kits. Having completed the panning portion of the mount, we're going to get started on the part of the assembly that will control the tilt. The next piece we'll be looking for is the servo head mounting bracket. And just like before, you can see it doesn't quite fit into the hole. So we'll need to trim off a little extra bit at the end to allow it to be mounted securely onto the frame. Just like before, you'll have to be careful that you don't cut the holes that the screws will need to mount the bracket into place. Now that our piece is cut to size, you're going to want to attach this to the frame with the barrel uh, with the teeth pointing towards the inside. We'll be securing this bracket into place from the back side. The screws that I find the best are these small tapered ones and we'll need two of them. And you just put them in and when you screw them on down they'll be nice and flush with the plastic and the tips won't poke out on the other side. Now we have both of our screws into place and they're flush with the plastic so there shouldn't be any interference whatsoever with the movement of the servos or the frame. Taking the final piece of the frame in the second servo, we'll mount the two together. You're going to want to make sure that the tabs of the servo go above the tabs on the frame. The screws I prefer to get this job done are these medium length screws with the wide teeth and the round head. They do take a little bit of work to, to get in, but once they're screwed down, the servo will be very securely fastened. Now that our screws are in all the way, it's time to do the final assembly. Stick the head of the servo into the bracket and the hole over the tab on the other side of the frame. Before screwing the servo head down, it's very important to make sure that the tilt servo has a full range of motion. For the final part of the assembly, you'll need to grab one of these screws, the flat tipped ones, and uh, put it in from the outside and just screw it into the servo head. Now that the assembly is complete, I like to make sure that the cables are out of the way. So I'm just going to take the, the tilt servo cable and poke it through the hinge here and just pull it out so all the wires are on one side. Now the device is complete. I hope this video was helpful for you. And if there's anything else you want to see me assemble, go ahead and put a, uh, a suggestion down in the comments below. Also, in the more section, I've included links to, to my site where you can pick these up. Thank you for watching.